In some cases, you'll want to apply sound effects to your sounds before you import them. But Unreal Engine also has a wide range of real-time effects that you can apply dynamically. These are broadly separated into two systems. The source effect, which you can think of as similar to an insert effect on a traditional mixing console, and submix effect sends, which is the equivalent of a send effect on a mixing console. You can also apply effects to the whole of a sound in a submix, rather than just sending a portion of the sound, but we'll be dealing with submix effects and submix sends in a future video. For now, we're going to concentrate on source effects and source effect preset chains. These effects apply to the whole of the original sound. In the forest clearing area of the demonstration level, that's shortcut key 4, there's the second wood fairy, and we want to make this a little bit more magical sounding. We can apply source effects on a sound wave, a sound cue, or an ambient sound actor, or sound source bus. What we apply to these is a source effect preset chain that contains our source effects. So let's create a new source effect preset chain and we're going to call it Wood Fairy 2. Then we'll create a couple of source effect presets to add to that chain. We'll create a stereo delay effect. We'll call that Wood Fairy Delay. And we'll create a phaser source effect preset. And we'll call that wood fairy phaser. And then we need to add those to our source effect preset chain. So we'll open that up. And we'll add two elements. The first being the stereo delay and the second being the phaser. So we've got our source effect presets. They've been added to a source effect preset chain. Now we just need to assign them to this sound. So wood fairy line one is here. And we'll scroll down to find the effects section. Source effect chain. Wood Fairy 2. Now in order to preview this, I'm just going to set this to be a looping sound wave. So let's hear how that sounds with that source effect preset chain applied to it. Welcome. To enable the magic in the first stone circle, stone circle, circle, you must first connect three... Three. Okay, so you can clearly hear those stereo delays. Now a good tip to remember is that you can actually copy and paste these settings here, so that you can keep track of some of your favourite presets. I've got mine here, so my stereo delay settings are those, and I'll just go and get the phaser settings as well, and copy them across. So let's hear those. Welcome. To enable the magic in the first stone circle, you must first collect three mushrooms from the forest. When you have them, bring them back to me. Listen carefully. So let's apply those effects now to all of those Fairy 2 dialogue lines here. So we'll just select them all and bulk edit. So here in the effects source, menu we will uh, go back and find our source effect preset chain and we'll apply it to all of those sound cues and then let's hear that in the game welcome to enable the magic in the first stone circle you must first collect three mushrooms from the first now the great thing about the effects is that you can regain mouse control and actually change them in real time. So let's say we mess about with this a little bit. Let's hear that second dialogue line. Perhaps a little excessive. So let's uh, reset those. 
Now, there's a couple of things we should be aware of with regard to source effects. The first is that the effects are executed incrementally. In other words, the sound is processed in the order of the preset chain 0, 1, 2, etc. This is worth remembering. For example, sometimes you might want to tame certain frequencies with an EQ or filter before they hit the compressor, so they're not influencing the threshold of where the compression starts to act. And sometimes you might want to boost other frequencies after the compressor so that the compressor isn't trying to squash them. Likewise, you might put your delay or reverb effect after the dynamics processor since you don't want the delays or reverb effects to be affected by the compression, where they might get boosted unnaturally or even gated out entirely. There's no hard and fast rules on this, but it's just worth remembering that the order of your effects will produce different outcomes. The second thing to remember is that source effects are applied pre-distance attenuation and pre-spatialization. In other words, they are applied to the original source sounds themselves, at their original volume, not the sounds as you might hear them in game. They also apply to each individual sound wave on an individual basis, not the combined output of a sound cue, so the results might not be always what you expect. These are just things to be aware of, but ultimately, you'll use your ears and your judgment to get the effect you want. So why not just pre-bake these sounds into the Wood Fairies dialog before importing them into Unreal Engine? Well, firstly, the delay effects will likely result in some pretty long and hence pretty big files, which might be a consideration for some platforms, particularly mobile ones. And secondly, we may not always want the effects to be applied. So imagine, for example, that there is an evil wizard, and this evil wizard has the ability to remove magic from this world. We might want to be able to control the effects on the Wood Fairies dialog in order to reflect whether magic was active or inactive. In the Wood Fairy blueprint, let's add a Boolean variable called magic active. And so that will tell us true or false whether magic is active in the world or not. And let's use that to switch the effects on or off. And we do that by bypassing the effects. So let's create a new variable that is called uh, wood fairy preset chain. And we'll make that variable type a source effect preset chain. Compile and we'll select the wood fairy preset chain here. Bringing that into our event graph, we can drag out and see the options that we have under effects. We can add source effects to that preset chain, get the number of entries in the preset chain, remove effects or bypass effects. So let's select that. And we'll say that the effects being bypassed are controlled by this magic active. So when we talk to the wood fairy, when we interact with the wood fairy, we'll check this first. And what we want to say is, if the magic is active in the world, then apply the effects, and if it isn't, then bypass the effects. So what we want to do actually is to invert this Boolean. So if magic active is true, then the effects are not bypassed. So let's do that using a bit of Boolean logic. We'll use a not. So let's set that magic active initially to be false, so it will be bypassed. Now we're going to need a couple of these because we have two source effect presets in our chain. So let's copy that and also add the second index. Connect these up. So we've got index 0, index 1, which relates to the delay effect and the phaser. So let's see how that sounds in game. So the evil wizard has removed magic from the world. Welcome. To enable the magic in the first stone circle. So our effects aren't applied. And then magic is active in the world. Welcome. To enable the magic in the first And the effects are applied. Bypassing effects or even removing or adding them to the effect preset chain is fine when we've got a one-shot playing and we can apply these changes prior to triggering the sound. But if a sound is already playing 
then the transition between effects on and effects off might be a little clunky or might produce some unwanted audio artifacts. In this video, we've seen how to create source effects and source effect preset chains in order to apply effects to our sounds. Although we've seen some dynamic potential in terms of being able to bypass, add or remove these, we will at times want some finer control over the effects and the ability to adjust settings in response to game events or parameters. We'll be looking at this in the next video.